on seizing defeat from the jaws of victory. He and his political cronies in the White House in Chicago are, to say the least, unenthusiastic about regime change in Libya. Obama's lukewarm and self-contradicting statements have produced what is, at least for the moment, operational paralysis. I think that may give us a better understanding of why the White House may have told you you cannot hire him. Blumenthal could not get hired by our government, didn't pass any background check at all, had no role with our government, had never been to Libya, had no expertise in Libya, was critical of the president and others that you worked with, shared polling data with you on the intervention in Libya, gave you political advice on how to take credit for Libya, all the while working for the Clinton Foundation and some pseudo news entities. And, Madam Secretary, he had unfettered access to you. And he used that access, at least on one occasion, to ask you to intervene on behalf of a business venture. Do you recall that? You know, Mr. Chairman, if you don't have any friends who say unkind things privately, I congratulate you. Um, but from my perspective, I'd like to think uh, I, I don't, correct them. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what this line of questioning does to help us get to the bottom of the deaths of four Americans. I'll be happy, help to, us tell, I'll be to, happy to help you understand but, that, Madam Secretary. But I want to reiterate what I said to Congresswoman Sanchez. These were originally unsolicited. You've just said that uh, perhaps the main, if not the exclusive author, was a former intelligence uh, agent for our uh, country who rose to the highest levels of the CIA and who was given credit for being one of the very few who uh, pointed out that the intelligence used by the Bush administration to go to war in Iraq was wrong. So I think that, you know, the uh, sharing of information from an old friend that I did not take at face value, that I uh, sent on to those who were experts, um, is something that uh, you know, makes sense, uh, but it was certainly not in any way uh, the primary source of or the predominant uh, understanding that we had of what was going on in Libya and what we needed to be doing. Well, Madam Secretary, I'm out of time, and we'll pick this back up the next round, but I'll go ahead and, and let you know ahead of time why it's relevant. It's relevant because our ambassador was asked to read and respond to Sidney Blumenthal's drivel. He, it was sent to him to read and react to. In some instances, on the very same day, he was asking for security. So I think it is eminently fair to ask why Sidney Blumenthal had unfettered access to you, Madam Secretary, with whatever he wanted to talk about, and there's not a single solitary email to or from you to or from Ambassador Stevens. I think that is fair, and we'll take that up next Gentlemen round. yield. Gentlemen yield. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you've uh, made several inaccurate statements over the past month as you have tried to defend against multiple Republican admissions that the Select Committee has been wasting millions of tax dollars to damage Secretary Clinton's bid for president. On Sunday, you made another inaccurate statement during your appearance on Face the Nation, and it's being taken up here, and this is the relevance. Here's what you said, and I quote. There are other folks who may have equities in her emails, and there may be other entities who are evaluating her emails. But my interest, my interest in them is solely made that I get everything I'm entitled to so that I can do my job. The rest of it, classification, Clinton Foundation, you name it, I have zero interest in it which is why you haven't seen me send a subpoena related to it or interview a single person other than Brian Pagliano, because I need to know that the record is complete. And I'm going back to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I, I'm, wait Chairman, I, 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 I'm waiting on you. Me, oh, I, 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 I've been very I'm patient. Coming. Just wait. I, I'm oh. waiting on the inaccurate right. statement. Getting, I'm getting there. Mr. Chairman. Well, we got to take Mr. a break. Chairman, was I, well, it's not going to take long. You took up four minutes over, so let me have a break. I've let everybody go over, including you. you, Mr. Thank Conner. you very much. You issued a subpoena to Sidney Blumenthal on May 19th, 
2015, compelling him to appear for a deposition on June 16, 2015. You issued this subpoena unilaterally without giving the select committee members the opportunity to debate or vote on it. You sent two armed marshals to serve the subpoena on Mrs. Blumenthal's wife at their home without having ever sent him a request to participate voluntarily, which he would have done. Then, Mr. Chairman, you personally attended Mr. Blumenthal's deposition. You personally asked him about the Clinton Foundation, and you personally directed your staff to ask questions about uh, Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, which they did more than 50 times. Now, these facts directly contradict the statements you made on national television. This no, that, no, 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 sir. With all due respect, they do not. We're, we just heard email after email after email about Libya and Benghazi that Sidney Blumenthal sent to the Secretary of State. I don't care if he sent it by Morse code, carrier pigeon, smoke signals. The fact that he happened to send it by email is irrelevant. What is relevant is that he was sending information to the Secretary of State. That is relevant. Now, with respect to the subpoena, if he'd bothered to answer the telephone calls, 